Hey everyone, welcome to Political Punks. I am your not as humble host, Lisa Di Pasquale. Today we have pop culture icon, MTV host, host, former MTV host, <laughs> host of Kennedy on Fox Business, Kennedy. Hello welcome. friends. Hello Han Solo. Yeah, I only get to rock my Han Solo shirt every once in a while because it embarrasses my children. And when I left the house, with my baby Yoda ears, they were uh, they were mortified, which I feel is a, is a win for the parenting community. Well, and I think I think as Gen Xers, we can all agree that Han shot first. Uh, yeah, for sure. Come on, you know these special editions where Greedo's shooting first and it misses yeah. him, and then Sean, I mean, and Han shoots. It's just ridiculous. I mean, I'm, I remember that scene as a kid, and I just remember, you know, that tells you all you need to know about that character in under 30 seconds, that he would, yes. he, he's he's going to pull the trigger on the bad guy first. He's not going to wait for the guy to shoot. And then he walks out of the bar and he flips that coin and he's like, sorry about the mess. You know, I mean, <laughs> just yeah, super women badass. Women need to be in love with bad boys forever. Yeah, pretty much. I think that was the, you know, that's Who like, also turn out to be the greatest, like not really a bad boy, but, you know, just a very hard worker, great work ethic, mm -hmm. um, you know, understood physics, which is an ideal. And uh, I think there, there's a lot to adore about. To fix his own vehicle. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, I mean, uh, super anti-government. I mean, he is, uh, he's, he's an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's used to adapt, improvise and overcome. You know, I mean, it's, there's that scene, you know, when, when they get into Death Star and he's like using those smuggling uh, compartments under the floor and he's like I never figured I'd be smuggling myself you know it's yeah. I mean there's so much about him pro gun um, yeah it's, <laughs> it's, it's so many so many kids growing up wanted to be Luke you know I mean everybody kind of wanted to be the protagonist and I always wanted to be Han I, I and I I don't know what drew me to that character but I think well I think maybe you didn't like kissing your sister maybe, maybe that's so. it <laughs> yeah that, that, that could be potentially yeah so happy the or, uh, what is it may the fourth be with you because it's May the exactly 4th, right. so it's Star Wars Day, everybody. Yeah. So we, we can we celebrate are. Reagan and Star Wars, <laughs> that too, you know? Beautifully said. Yeah. Well, in addition to being a pop culture icon, you're also a gluten-free influencer. So when I saw this ridiculously priced set of cookies for a dozen is $160, I emailed you right away and said, you got to try this so I could get someone else to try it before I lay down the money. Yep, there they are. We still we still have like six left. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know how you go through those things. A dozen cookies, I was like, okay, this is going to take me maybe two nights watching Bravo. Well, they're um, huge. Yeah. They're well, massive. I mean, they're, they're, they're all like, they're so <laughs> dense. Yeah. Uh, the company is the last crumb. They're mm -hmm. so dense. They're all like mini cakes and, and you really do have to cut them up, but they're, they're really brilliantly crafted. Like mm -hmm. they, they are so, there's so much, but not too much packed into each one. And if the gluten free ones are this good, I cannot imagine how the gluten rich ones taste. Although I do have to take an issue and I have to warn my fellow celiacs that you know, it, it says last crumb gluten-free and they make a big deal about this gluten-free edition. You know, they're these luxury cookies, very well branded, beautifully packaged. And one of the ingredients is wheat. And I'm like, the hell? Like you can't <laughs> claim it's gluten-free and then have contains wheat because <laughs> wheat is the thing that has the gluten. So if there's wheat in there, they're not gluten-free. So I want to I, I, I wanna, I wanna call the company and be like, what the hell are you doing? And and I've done that before. I've called companies that have like soy sauce and, and barley malt and things like that. And their snack foods. I'm like, you're going to, you're going to kill someone because that's like saying, you know, these are nut free and then adding peanut butter. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it's like an ingredient that's not theirs. Like if they put Reese's cups in it, is it that cookie? No, this is the birthday boohoo birthday, one. Birthday cake. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I want to eat it. Hold on, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta figure out because I'm, I'm holding my phone up. Hold on, there's a tissue. Okay, I have to. Sorry, I have to unsheath this. Oh my gosh! Case what did you? Be so happy. We were trying to think of like what the name of these are. Is it like uh, designer cookies? You, you said luxury cookies. Yeah, they, they call themselves as luxury cookies. Okay, so that's what they're calling. Yeah, I they're... hope this doesn't have wheat in it. 
Well, it's well, just... so friggin' good. Look at the look at all the confetti. Yeah. There's like little tiny confetti dots. Yum. And then confetti little mini tubes. And there's like bits of frosting baked mm-hmm. inside that this is why they're so like they must be scientists because the, the frosting bits hold their shape and it's so it's so cakey. It's, Even though it's baked, it tastes like dough. It does. Yeah. But it's, but it's it's cake it's though. Your first, batch, your first time with everything but the candles. Damn. We oh, have no. the mac This is my last birthday cake one. I I that we one. powered through them all. Yeah, we're we're like, what are we halfway through? Yeah, I think this is number six. Now we ate them or we're eating them in order because I kind of thought it's like a mixtape. They put it and he said they put it numbered for a reason. So to me, like they started strong with that chocolate chip. Like you start your mixtape with like a good one, right? And then See, it our goes- first one is our first one is chocolate lava. Okay. Okay, maybe that's what it is. Our first one is the better than sex chocolate chip cookie. But the chocolate lava we had last two- night. And that one was Was that last night or was that two nights ago? Okay, two nights ago. Okay, because that was yeah, amazing. that one's amazing. And and that one you can either do so I've been heating them up in the oven, mm-hmm. but you don't have to be fancy. Like you don't have to wait for your oven to heat up and then stick them in there for five minutes because you'll you'll go insane waiting. Like if you put them in the microwave for fifteen seconds, they're perfect. Like the yeah. lava ones were we've literally been- after fifteen seconds in the microwave. Yeah, we've been doing the microwave and have been very, very happy with it. <laughs> yeah, this is the macadamia nut. I mean, just look yeah, at that. I'm trying to See, we don't get that. We got peanut butter, chocolate chip, birthday cake, and chocolate lava. But I mean, you can, I mean, you can just tell this is half and it's obviously, but it's huge. I mean, it's a huge, yeah. thick, really dense cookie. And, um, and the packaging, you know, it's like, you know, there's, there's people on, you know, we were, Lisa posted something about this and people were, were kind of like bashing it because it's so expensive, but it's like the packaging uh, the copy, the design, the graphic design, the the, the photography, it, the aesthetics overall that you get with these delicious cookies is just unbelievable. It's beautiful. Yeah, and and I, you know, it's like I give them props for everything because this is, it is so comprehensive from the copywriting because they give you a booklet um, right. with, you know, wonderful stories for each thing. And it's so satisfying to read it while you have to eat the cookie slowly or you're going to go into like insulin shock. Right. Well, and it was so funny because the, the people that were criticizing it, you're like, you're paying for the packaging. I'm like, I know. And it's wonderful. Right. Yeah, but by the way, it's, it's not just good packaging. If, if it were, if it were just good packaging, they wouldn't be able to sustain their business. Yeah. Well, and that's what I think is so, I, I kind of want to learn more about the company. Like, did this start, because they kind of created the, 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 you know, it's an LA based company. So I have to believe that they become mail order probably because of like COVID related stuff. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what they do is they, once a week, they make it available to order and they make however many batches. And then once it's gone, it's done, it's done. Yeah. And so they kind of like create this need because like the first couple of times I clicked and I'm like, oh, it sold out. But then one time I clicked and it wasn't. And I was like, oh, my God, I got to get it. <laughs> yeah. Like when you sent me that link, um, the gluten free hadn't gone live yet. Mm-hmm. So I got it as soon as it did. And we're two weeks in and still like I've, I think I have two more left. Yeah. I mean, it's really four cookies per cookie. Yes, it's for sure. So if you're like $14 per dessert, I mean, that's not bad on top of it being like a fun activity and experience. You know, we've been rating the cookies every night. Or What's every your favorite? Night. Pardon? What's your favorite? Um, let me <laughs> I think either better than sex, the chocolate chip cookie mm-hmm. or the chocolate lava so far. Yeah. See, I like, yeah. I like birthday cake chocolate chip, peanut butter, and then the chocolate lava, which I love, is still not even my favorite, even though it's amazing. And it's better than any like chocolate souffle dessert you have in a fancy restaurant. Yeah. And yeah. the thing is, is that like, I'm a big, I'm a baker. I know you're a baker. And they go the extra mile. Like it's not a chocolate chip cookie with like three kinds of chocolate. It's like they use brown butter to make the dough and, you know, having the three different types of chocolate and then that thick malden salt on top. It's so good. 
Yeah, we've got, got that salt on this one too, on the um, the macadamia nut, which is a nice touch. I didn't get that. I love. Is it macadamia nut and, and white chocolate? White chocolate it's because like it, it talks chocolate. about it talks about like um, turning forty and wanting to wear New Balance shoes and 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 going back to um, white chocolate macadamia nut, which is like a cookie that I I remember getting in the mall. I think it like Mrs. Fields or something mm -hmm. like that back That's in the day. That's absolutely right. That is yeah. correct. As Orange Julius was going out. Mm. Mrs. Oh, Fields was coming online. Story. It changed my life. And and that's one of the things where I was so sad when I was diagnosed with celiac because you have to say goodbye to all that stuff. That, and there are certain things that you can't recreate. Like you cannot, and I make cinnamon rolls probably three or four times a year because it's very labor intensive. I will never make anything that tastes like a Cinnabon. And you know, it's like the fact that it tastes the same anywhere, like McDonald's fries. Same thing with the filet of fish. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love filet of fish so much and I will always miss it and it's not worth eating it. It's not worth the, the pain, the 10 days of agony. <laughs> do, you, do you put the, do you get the American cheese on the filet of fish? Oh, hell yeah. All right. All right. That, that's, that's all I need to know. So. Yeah, that tartar sauce, like I even dip it in ketchup. Like I'm not, <laughs> I mean, I did. My, my former pre-celiac life. Yeah. It was great. So people, I guess, don't realize how much it's in, like, everything. And they also, like, a lot of people, I'm sure you come ac across this, people that kind of think it's, like, because it's a trend, not because, you know, you're a celiac. Yeah, that's, so when I go to restaurants and you can feel the waiter or waitress kind of rolling their eyes mm -hmm. and it's like and before no one knew what celiac was but now if you tell them no i'm actually celiac they're like oh oh okay that's totally different and and that, they're like oh, okay well you know we're actually going to cook it in a different pan and blah 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 um and it's it's not like oh no i i'm pretty sure i'm celiac like i run into people <laughs> like that all the time it's like no it's it's a medical condition that requires a diagnosis so it's one of those things where if you think you have celiac um, first get a blood test and then if, if it comes back even kind of positive because a lot of times doctors don't know how to read it then what you have to do is eat gluten for 10 to 14 days so the antibodies build up uh, in your small intestine and then they have to biopsy your small intestine usually through endoscopy which is this way which is the comfortable way right. um, and then that's when they confirm the diagnosis but you don't want to go through life going, well, maybe I can just have a little if you do, in fact, have celiac because it'll wear down the villi in your small intestine. And then if your intestine peters out, you, you cannot continue to live because there's no such thing as a small intestine transplant. Mm -hmm. I've asked. Yeah, haven't heard of that one yet. Very, well, you know, I have actually, I mean, I don't have anything similar, but I do have, because I had um, bariatric surgery, I had most of my small intestines removed. So, oh, really? Similar in that if you eat the wrong thing, it goes into your system like right away because it doesn't have all that time to process. Yeah. <laughs> That's really, I didn't know, I didn't know that they resected that much of your small bowel when they did bariatric surgery. That's fascinating. Yeah, they take out um, something like two thirds of your stomach and two thirds of your small intestines. Although, you know, it's weird, they keep your stomach inside you, but it's just like floating around, I guess. And then Ooh. you're in small intestines. <laughs> Do you, are you happy with it? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, I've lost about 140 pounds um, wow. and, you know, still losing. And, uh, you know, obviously I do all the things you're supposed to do. Like, as I, I do all the things I'm supposed to do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the other thing with the cookie, like it's hard to eat sugar. So obviously there's always a way to get around things, you know, eat smaller amounts over a longer period of time. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not some, you know, magic fix, but if people want to think of me as a cheater, then that's fine too. Well, <laughs> yeah, but well you... it's, that, it's that thing where you got to do everything. It's got to be diet. It's got to be exercise. You know I mean? What is it? Huckabee, Chris Christie. It's like, they had the same thing and they're all back to exactly where they started. Basically, you know? It, it, yeah. Basically. There, there's no, there's no, like they say in triathlon, there's no free speed. You know, right. you gotta, you gotta work for it. There's, there's no magic thing you're going to do. And then all of a sudden be a world-class athlete and uh, it's the same thing. Um, and you know, it's like, I know people who have surgery who did everything and they did everything right and they ate salads and they did 
fasting and, you know, cleanses and all the things you're supposed to do. And it just, you know, it just doesn't work. And then they, uh, they have the surgery and you have to, the people I know have had to be very, very disciplined mm. about what and when they eat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it'll be five years since I got it um, in October. So I'm, I'm hopeful that, you know, it's, it's sticking um, on top of just like lifestyle habits, like working out and uh, not eating cookies every day. Yeah, no, I feel you. No, it's it's amazing. I mean, you're you're the star of, of of your doctors. So, I mean, I mean, I think they always tell you that you're like in the one percent. You know, actually doing everything and doing a good job, and and you've done an amazing job. I mean, it's like complete transformation, and uh, and it's one of those things where it's like you just make these things kind of habitual. You know, working out. You know, eating right. Um, I mean, it's easy to do all that stuff when you're young. Um, and then you just kind of hit this wall somewhere in your late thirties and it's just, it feels better to be kind of a better friend to yourself rather than like abusing yourself, you know? Like, it is so important to push through that wall. It is so incredibly important. I can't even tell you. And you know, it's like, I learned that I have a friend who's, uh, in his sixties now and he's like solid muscle. He was an Australian rules football player. And he was like, the key is never stop working out. He's like, yeah. that's the, what everyone does. And then they try and get back to where they were and you never can. But if you don't stop, you give yourself the best advantage for uh, really maintaining for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, it's, Jack it's, it's older, you know, there's such a, a fear of like weightlifting or, you know, anything with, with weights and, um, you know, it's just with metabolism and all that kind of stuff, you're just trying to maintain. <laughs> Yeah, and because you you do lose muscle mm -hmm. um, over the years, and so you gotta you know it's like you you have to you have to lift weights in order to get it back. Yeah, and if you're gonna have a cookie, make it worth it. Make it a fifteen dollar cookie. Right. I learned that from a nutritionist, and and she was like, the people the biggest mistake people make is when they cheat, they feel guilty, so they eat it so fast. Mm -hmm. So they like destroy the evidence. She was like, if you, if you're going to have something like <laughs> romance it a little bit, like take your time with it, yes. savor it, enjoy it. And I'm like, damn right. Because you're much more likely if you're going slow to enjoy it and eat less than feel bad and just, just pound everything you can in your head hole. Right. Well, yeah, and also you're not satisfied if it's so fast, then it's like, well, wait, I didn't yeah. really, now it's gone. I don't even feel good. I'm always telling my dog that, you know, when I give her treats, I'm like, you know, slow down, savor the flavor, enjoy it. But she doesn't listen to me. No, I have a French bulldog and I go over to people's houses and they can leave kibble in a bowl. And the dog will come over and just have a little taste and then walk away and do something else. I don't think my dog has ever lasted more than 25 seconds with yeah. food in his bowl. Because <laughs> he's so food driven and now he learned how to jump on the table. He's he's a fat <laughs> ham. <laughs> now jump on the table and he ate a box of croissants last week. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah. Somebody yeah. in the, somebody in our house taught my dog how to get get up on the the chair, uh, and and you know be able to survey the table. I don't know who did that, but 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 not good. Somebody did. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, yeah, mine's an Australian cattle dog. I have I have had friends who free feed their pets. I have never had a dog I could do that with, and certainly not the one that I have right now. I mean, I mean, she she would just, I mean, she just she'd be like that um, that possum in that that viral video that got caught in the pastry, the the, the yeah. pastry uh, or the bakery, and it's just it's just gorgeous itself. Like on, I think it was like um, it was like uh, it wasn't it was um, Danishes or something. I would think of like the corgi puppy who was like eating jelly. Jelly, yeah. Walk in and it's covered in red jelly, like on its <laughs> belly. And so it's like, what do you think when you see this poor massacred yeah. puppy? <laughs> but it's really just red jelly. I, yeah, I gotta, exactly. I got to say with Last Crumb, I was really impressed, you know, you know, taking on um, two things, taking on chocolate chip and doing something really creative with it, but not showy. I was really blown away by that macadamia nut as well plus i will say this that 
I'm really impressed that they did not pick the snickerdoodle because that's the worst cookie in the history of cookies and there's no way to improve it. So they're just like, now nah, we're not even going to go there. We'll do something else. We'll do the floor is lava, which I think is like, I, I think equal to the chocolate chip that that floor is lava one was just it, it was it was so cakey on the inside. And then with the uh, powdered sugar on top, I felt like I was eating some kind of like you were saying, kind of like a souffle or some kind of like um, yeah. expensive like dessert. A, yeah, like it didn't feel like a well, cookie. Absolutely. No. Lava. No. It gave it lava. Like it actually, you know, oozed. Yeah. <laughs> but my, my hatred of the snickerdoodle is well known. It's all over social media, I, you know, and, uh, and, and, my, and my hatred lives on. So. See, I like, uh, I miss um, <laughs> Samoa's, the Girl Scout cookies with like yeah. caramel, coconut, dark chocolate. That mm. beautiful shortbread, like I love those little bastards. Yeah, those are good. Those are good. I like uh, the lemon one as well. It's really good. Uh, uh, I love the lemon Girl Scout cookies, but I thought that the lemon um, one that came in in this was was also really good. It wasn't like overly tangy. It wasn't uh, too aesthetic. So we didn't get a lemon. Oh, you didn't get how a lemon. Many, okay. How many different kinds of cookies did you guys get? Well, we got twelve. Are they all different? Yeah. 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 Oh, Every single yeah. one. Did you yeah, get duplicates? We got, we got three of each. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, you know, they yeah, have why... one that dropped today that's four different, but I don't think it's a gluten-free. I'm not sure because it's 160, so it could be gluten-free because the gluten-free is more it's, more, it's more expensive to take out the gluten. Um, Do you suppose they didn't send you, uh, you know, as many because some of them just have gluten in them? I mean, maybe. They don't maybe... translate. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I mean, that's good. I will tell you from gluten-free baking. For your version. There are some things that are impossible to make. Like okay. you, I, as a home baker, you cannot make croissants. Hmm. Okay. Wow. That's true. There yeah. are gluten-free croissants that exist in the world. I know William Sonoma sells them. They're super expensive and they're frozen. And by the time I get them, like, I don't even want them. Yeah. Yeah. But I've, I've tried and it's like, they just, beignets, I have not been able to figure out, but there's certain things. And also with gluten-free baking, and any gluten-free bakers know this, they're not always the same. You put the exact same ingredients in, use the same technique. It's not always the same. They don't taste the same. They don't cook the same. And there's also a fine line between being raw and being burnt. Mm -hmm. Yes. It is tough. Yeah. That's, it sounds, it sounds, I mean, baking is difficult to begin with. I mean, it's, it's such a science and you have to be so, it seems like precise or, or else a little bit can throw everything off a lot. And yeah. I can't imagine then throwing like another curveball in there by being gluten free. That's that's gotta yeah because be... sometimes like sometimes I use cup for cup flour and other times I make my own mix if I'm trying to do low carb with like almond flour and coconut flour and yeah. you know they, they, they all like it changes everything and I I don't know why but I've not been able to get bread and I make bread every Easter and it it comes out like it it doesn't rise and it doesn't add like I talk to the yeast I get different kinds of yeast and I don't know what it like I've tried putting milk and sugar in with yeast. I've tried just water and it just I don't know I don't know if yeast is mad at me for some past <laughs> life transgression and it won't forgive but I've you know it's like I, I keep going to bat <laughs> strange that's very strange what well do you have any final thoughts on the luxury cookie experience does this say anything about anything that's going on in the country right now yeah don't buy la mer la mer is the same thing as nivea last crumb cookies are so much better than anything i've ever had and they are worth every penny if cookies are important to you then spend like it damn it yeah well and you probably feel the same way and that's like my um threshold because i'm a I'm, i like to bake is, is it better than something I can bake? And the answer is yes. Oh, it, it is a hell's yes for me. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, and just, I think, supporting, you know, small, really creative entrepreneurs like this. Um, I've just, I've never seen anything like this before. It's so unique. It had to have come out of COVID. Um, it, it's, you know, it's one of those things on top of getting me out of jury duty that was a blessing out of COVID. So yeah. um, I, I just think from that standpoint of small businesses and, and like supporting really creative people who are who are actually innovating and doing something really different and awesome and they obviously know their demographic i mean all that copy just seems like there's a gen xer behind all that copy i mean it's, yeah, a, it's, sure. it's undeniable that's, that's why i was i was impressed because i'm like they are paying a copywriter and that person is earning <laughs> yeah. their keep 
Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the same with it's the same with the photography and the design and everything. I was like, they spent money and hired some really great creatives to you know put this all together on top of you know the the product, which is just a ten. You know, and it's like you know it's like I'm sitting here splitting hairs. What's my favorite? It's like well, they're all really good. I'm just sort of like nitpicking what I don't like about them. It's it's kind of like talking about I don't know Kubrick or Peckinpah. It's like. Oh, that's his weak film, but it's like, oh, right, right, his weak film. In comparison to what? Yeah, exactly. Well, I hope yes. we can have you again because um, we can we can talk all day. We definitely want to talk about music at some point and, you know, everything. So That would be lovely. Let's do it again. Let's find another baked good to discuss music over. Mm. Yeah, sure. Good all idea. right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye See you later. Every day of the year.